B.J. Hall and by Dongo. Need to contend with the Clemson mascot who's trying to steal the show before <laughs> tip off as we are underway from Little John Coliseum. Clemson starts with the ball in white. Georgia Tech defending in blue. Our officials tonight, Roger Ayers, Lee Cassell, and Lamar Simpson. Right to Hall. This is where Clemson feels like they have the advantage tonight inside, where P.J. Hall, like you just said, Debbie, has been terrific all season. He's coming off a 26-point, 11-rebound performance, and he got to the free-throw line. Look at that play right there. That is rim body ball. He protects the ball and gets to the free-throw line with his strength at the rim. P.J. Hall opens the scoring from the foul line. Expected to be an all-ACC first-teamer. I guess the question becomes, Debbie, when the expectation every night, game in and game out, is that you're going to keep delivering and you're at the top of that scouting report, how do you keep performing like Hall has? You put the work in, you have the reps, and you're confident. P.J. has not had a full offseason in a lot while because of some injury. I talked to him earlier today, and he said he feels great. He's playing a, a good, solid amount of minutes for Brad Brownell, but he's not impacted by fatigue or by any, any, anything else. He's staying out of foul trouble, too, after fouling out early at three games. By Dongo draws the foul. One of the star freshmen in the ACC to start this season. I mean, this is a really good rim runner, roll to the rim, hard roller. He's not going to pop. And when Dongo gets two feet in the paint, he's got great length. He will put some pressure on that back row for Clemson with his quickness. Dongo, eight straight games in double figures. It was interesting speaking with first year head coach Damon Stoudemire. He said, I didn't know I'd have to rely on a freshman like he has with Dongo, but he has certainly delivered in his first campaign with the Yellow Jackets. And so has the freshman, Nate George. He's been terrific. Didn't play in the first three games. Number two in blue for Georgia Tech. Really a good decision maker at a high rate of speed. Here's Dylan Hunter making his first start of the season, and the floater falls. Each time and each pass of the basketball through the middle third, Clemson gets a little bit deeper in the paint. That's a great shot by, the, by Dylan Hunter. Here's Kelly on a turnaround. Great defense by Chase Hunter, and it's Clemson basketball. Gerard a three, and he's fouled, so three coming at the foul line for Joseph Gerard, who's coming off a season-high 26 points in the win against Boston College. Kowasi Reeves on his hip, and Joe Gerard has great acceleration off that pin-down action for Brad Brownell. It's important to get him going as well. He had a really good game the last one, 5 for 11 from the three-point line for 26 points in the win over B.C. Well, the good thing for Gerard coming over from Syracuse is you don't have to change your wardrobe. <laughs> Got a lot of orange in that wardrobe, right? <laughs> yeah, but he's had to change his defensive mindset. That's true. That's one of the reasons why Joe Gerard came to Clemson. And that's what he told me last week at Virginia Tech. He changed his body, he dropped some weight, he's gotten in better shape, and he's learning to play some man-to-man -man defense and some different schemes that Brad Brownell will put in, in, in the system. Contested three, Reeves, nothing but the bottom of the net, and Georgia Tech needed that triple. I mean, Kowasi Reeves is their best three-point shooter by percentage. He's the most confident three-point shooter they have, and you got to come with a longer closeout on him. 
Clean block by Dewana, poked away Dongo. It falls to Hunter. 10 on the timer. Hunter pulls the trigger. Nothing but air. Shefflin there. Cleans up the spill. I mean, I, I'd make a really good case for Ian Shefflin being one of the top offensive rebounders in the ACC. In the last five games, he's averaging five offensive rebounds. He just reads it off the glass so well. Dongo passes out of the double team. Four seconds on the shot clock. George has to heave it. Missed it. Really strong start for Clemson on both ends of the floor. That was a heck of an effort by P.J. Hall. He gets the double on the baseline, then he recovers with a deflection, gets back out to the corner to double. That's a lot of work for 6'10 on the baseline. Hall, and he's fouled. No call. Shefflin almost another offensive putback. I thought Hall was hacked shooting that three. George transition three. That rims out no good. Gerard splits two, lost the handle though, kept in play. George, step back three, hits it this time. A little separation with some foot fake, maybe a little bump, but I don't think he extended his arm. You can give that bump to get open. Heck of a play by the freshman. Here's Chase Hunter, pull up, pop. Can't connect, another offensive rebound. Dylan Hunter. Clemson really attacking that offensive glass. Swiped away by Gerard. Fast tempo start here, Debbie. I love the pace, playing a clean game. Both teams getting after it. That's what you want to see in ACC. It has. That really helps you now. Unfortunately, tonight, you put yourself in the danger zone. Georgia Tech's a really good team, better than their 8-8 eight and eight record, but a home loss to this Yellow Jackets team would be outside of quad one. Yeah, that would be a tough one for Clemson because you, you don't want to think that there can be a bad loss in conference play, but as the season goes on, those quad numbers change, obviously. Offensive rebound keeps the possession alive for Georgia Tech. You've really got to protect your home court in this league. Here's Miles Kelly. Misfires from three. Shefflin already with a couple of offensive rebounds. Chase Hunter in attack mode. Goes left all the way to the rim for two. Clemson's acceleration in the quarter court offensively has been really good. Georgia Tech's about a half a step late on some of those curls. Here's Sturdivant from three. This time, nothing but the bottom of the net. You know, Sturdivant gives Damon Stoudemire a veteran point guard on the top of the floor. And I think when he plays Sturdivant and George together, that's a pretty good tandem as well. But they're very good decision makers with the ball. They're both very good defensively as well. All Georgia Tech's made shots tonight have been from three. Sturdivant's been a bright spot off the bench for Damon Stoudemire. And here's Miles Kelly. Kowasi Reeves, step back, contested shot off the mark, almost rimmed in on the rebound. Really good job by Wiggins not to help off the strong side corner. Just a little defensive stunt towards that penetration of Miles. And uh, Kowasi Reeves and makes him pick it up. RJ Godfrey, terrific post move. 
Strong on the interior, Jay. Ability to score left or right over both shoulders. He's only getting better. Georgia Tech has not gone inside often tonight. Sturdivant tries another three from the logo off the mark. Wide open in transition. Clemson will usually make you pay from there. Beadle couldn't finish it. Tigers shooting 0 for 4 from 3 to start this game. You're not going to get a better look than that. It's a quick trigger when you don't have a lot of sweat on you yet. Dongo in the post. Great defense by Clemson. Hunter in attack mode. Missed in the mid range. Coach Stoudemire doesn't like to call a lot of sets. He really believes in them playing in concepts, and they went over it again today. I think they rep their concepts every day. Dangerous pass knocked around. Hunter hustles for it and wins it for Clemson. And a foul call. Now the defense in the student section got grit after dark, so I'm stealing it and going <laughs> ACC after dark. It's pretty cool, right? We're sitting right here. The students are all over us. It's loud in here. It's a 9 o'clock tip in the south, and people are excited about Clemson basketball in this building. It's cool. Well, they've got great reason to be. 12 and 4 entering tonight. One of the top teams in the ACC. The four losses, they're all quality losses, quad one losses. You know, they hit that three-game losing streak, bounce back, win on Saturday against Boston College at a good opportunity to make it back-to-back -to -back tonight. Well, P.J. Hall coming off a 26-point, 11-rebound game. And Joe Girard, 5 for 11 from the three-point line and a win over B.C. To, to get 26 points as well. So that's a pretty good combination for Clemson inside out. Been a great one-two punch for the Tigers. Coleman hits it. Coming off the bench straight into the box score, Debo Coleman from deep. Clemson yet to hit a three, while Georgia Tech has hit three already in the game, and Tech's going to switch to the zone right here off the timeout. They had been playing man-to-man. -man. All the Yellow Jackets made shots tonight have come from three as P.J. Hall answers immediately. Just a good job of working inside between the elbows in the middle of that zone. Nathan George draws the foul. He's been a real bright spot. The freshman from Toronto, Canada, coming off a career-high 17 points at Cameron Indoor. Debo Coleman, the 6'6 junior, lines it up. 35% three-point shooter. He and Kowasi Reeves are pretty good on the outside for Georgia Tech. George takes it himself, misfires. I mean, you're not going to get a much better look than that to the elbow with a, a nice looking jump shot. You got to put those down. Splits the double, everything but the finish, but Hall there to clean up the spill. Georgia Tech, who has been one of the top two offensive rebounding teams in the ACC, is getting beat on that on the glass right now by Clemson. Wiggins lost the handle, no foul called. So it'll be Georgia Tech basketball. We watch the crash right here by P.J. Hall. No one checks him out. He has a lane to the rim. That's four offensive rebounds already tonight for Clemson. And Jack Clark entering the game for the Tigers. He's missed the last nine games, hasn't played since late November. Third of it, way off the mark there. So good to get Clark back. The transfer from NC State. Big boost to the front court. That's a travel underneath the hoop. 
What does Clark give Clemson? Length, three-point shooting. He's got to shake off the rust of not having repped at game speed. But I, th I think he's got experience, and he helps their depth because without Alex Hemingway, who's still out with an injury, and Jack Clark being out so long, it's really affected Clemson's depth on the perimeter. A lot of height on the court for the Tigers right now. Hall, Wiggins, and Clark all above 6'10". And then you've got Shefflin at 6'8", but his numbers would tell you he's seven foot as he grabs another rebound. Well, P.J. Hall got a piece of that. Georgia Tech has made just one of their last eight. Girard in attack mode. Great defense by George Hall there to keep it alive. Back to, to Girard, drills a three. Joe Girard from deep. That's just good work by Girard to exit cut off the block shot. Get his feet under his shoulders and for P.J. Hall to find him. First made three of the night for Clemson. And no surprise, it's Joe Girard. Georgia Tech trying to answer with a triple. George cashes in on the second chance opportunity. Nathan George is going to be an excellent player in this league. We talked to him today at shoot around, Jay. What did he say? He got three D1 offers. Yep, Seattle U, Corpus Christi, and Sam Houston State. His uncle had a relationship with Damon, and that's why he's here. And wow, putting himself in this position right here to test his skill set against the ACC guards has been, he's really been outstanding. The two freshmen for Tech have been really good early on. He has been a pleasant surprise for first-year head coach Damon Stoudemire handling the ball here. Trying to dump it inside. Great ball movement. Finds George. Gapari from three. He can't connect. A really good defensive possession by Clemson. You know, we used to talk about Clemson through a defensive lens all the time, but they've been very good offensively, and they were good last year offensively. They won 14 games in the ACC last year and got snubbed by the NCAA tournament. Shot clock down to five. Cross-court pass. Finds Clark off to Shefflin into two. And it doesn't drop, but Hall's there to poke it home. What a play by P.J. Hall. And Clemson's really showing some muscle on the front line right now. They are really crashing the glass. And Georgia Tech's team speed hasn't been able to, hasn't hurt Clemson by going to the boards. Dongo lines up the three off the mark. And Clemson out rebounding Georgia Tech 20 to 8 in this game already. Gerard. That was halfway down, but rimmed out. No good. That roll replace action is really tough to guard with that combination for Clemson. Another deep three. All the Yellow Jackets made shots have been from three today, Debbie. Yet to make it two. I think the size for Clemson is having an impact, right? I mean, P.J. Hall, when they've driven in there, he's blocked shots, he's altered shots. And P.J. already with eight rebounds in the first half for Clemson. Watch this, Gerard shows pump fake and then relocates to the perimeter, knocks down a triple. Smart play by a veteran savvy guard. Saturday's triple header in the ACC tips off with Clemson and Tallahassee against Florida State at four, Virginia at Georgia Tech at six, and then the nightcap Cameron Indoor Pitt at Duke. Triple header on Saturday right here on ACC Network. And then Clemson's number one fan, Frankie <laughs> Antonelli, sporting the Clemson Life shirt in the house here at Little John Coliseum. Having the time of his life here. What a great community. There's his buddy Sam. He's up there in the corner in the student section, hanging out, and they're having a blast. 
this is a special place. Clemson Life has been a, a unique opportunity for families like ours. Life is an acronym. Learning is for everyone. Frankie's a graduate of the program, and uh, he lives here independently with support, holding down a couple of jobs at the Shepherd Hotel in York Pie, and he absolutely loves it. It is so awesome to watch him in his element with his buddies, rooting on the Tigers. It has been a good start for Frankie and all Clemson fans as Chase Hunter adds a bucket. He's been ditching me all day. You know, I've been trying to, you know, want to have breakfast? No. How about lunch? No. He's, just, <laughs> he's got his own schedule. He's trying to get rid of me. Oh, man. Usually when mom's in town, she's paying, so you're eating with mom. <laughs> Here's Nathan George. Perfect touch. A breakout freshman. Nathan George continues a strong season. He's got eight of the Yellow Jackets 18. I mean, he did not even play in the first three games. And if you've watched the tendency of Coach Stoudemire, you've got to earn it in practice, and he's very much a matchup guy. So depending on the opponent, they have had multiple starting lineups, but Nathan George has been in the lineup in the last 13, and he's been outstanding. Shot clock down to five. Hunter. Clemson's got to get rid of it. They do so, and that's a shot clock violation. That's not the shot you want. Good defense from the Yellow Jackets. David Stoudemire will like that. First-year head coach enjoyed our conversation with the longtime NBA veteran player and coach. He said, we're close to winning some of these games, but at some point, you just have to make winning plays. And they were 8-3 and three with wins against Mississippi State at Duke and now a five-game losing streak where they've been in every game. They could have won all five of them. He had an interesting take on making plays and staying in the moment, right? And, and part of that is generating enough opportunity, situational offense, and reps to play the way he wants them to play. He wants them to do it the right way. And it's not about running plays, it's about teaching how to play. Dumped inside, Hall. Great defense, clawed all over it for Georgia Tech. Miles Kelly been quiet tonight. Leads Georgia Tech in scoring. Has it here. Great pass. Wide open three. And Reeves delivers from the corner. How about that pass? I mean, Miles Kelly was out of bounds, and he throws that drift to the corner. That's what I'm talking about, concepts. I think Miles Kelly is one of, if not the fastest player in the league, with or without the ball end to end. He's got incredible acceleration in the open floor. Chase Hunter dispossessed. Transition three, Kelly hits it. It's a 10-0 Georgia Tech run, and Kelly has fired the Yellow Jackets in front. That speed played out in his sprint to the corner to get his feet organized after the break on the three-point line. Hall trying to answer, and he does. I mean, who do you get the ball to when you need a bucket, right? It's pretty simple for Clemson and honestly P.J. Hall has delivered all year his entire career since he stepped foot on campus Cali deep three missed it that time oh good pass fake Dylan Hunter wide open, misfired, and a foul called on the rebound. But Dylan Hunter making his first start of the season, joining his brother Chase in the starting lineup. We'll tell you where the Hunter brothers get their basketball toughness when we come back. Part of an incredible recruiting class for Andy Landers. And I, I had a chance to talk to Dylan this morning. And I said, hey, uh, when did you guys start beating your mom in the driveway? It wasn't until seventh grade. I'd still she, bet on mom. Hey, I, I'm telling you what, she could ball. She had incredible toughness and grit, and she was great on the glass. She played with uh, some legendary players at Georgia as well for the Hall of Famer Andy Landers. 
Both the Hunter brothers on the floor right now. Here's Chase, fires the three, can't connect. They've combined for six points starting for the first time together this season. Nathan George has had the hot hand for the Yellow Jackets. Leads them with eight, passing here. Dongo didn't have the touch, it almost rimmed in. Dongo gets his own miss, and this time it does fall to tie it at 28. I mean, coming off the timeout, it's a great clear out. It's a two-man game and a beautiful pocket pass to get that play started. And uh, another possession of zone by Georgia Tech. Remember, P.J. Hall hit a 15-footer the last time that they showed a possession of zone. Brad Brown now, the all-time winning his head coach for the Tigers in year number 14. Had a great start to this season, 9-0. All the way to 11-1 before that three-game losing streak. Bounced back over the weekend and a win against Boston College. Now trying to make it two in a row, but Georgia Tech and Miles Kelly back in front. We call that the 45 cut right there because it's on the 45 angle. And that is the acceleration of Miles Kelly from the weak side to ball side. Here's Hall. Finds Hunter. Can't spin his way free. Godfrey muscling it home. RJ Godfrey on a rack attack. His upside is absolutely incredible. You know he has great genes and he's an incredible athlete. Now the combination of skill continues to grow on that young man and he is going to be a heck of a player for Brad Brownell. The confusion on the floor, a timeout was called. But Damon Sautermeyer says, I didn't call it. So inadvertent whistle, it'll be Georgia Tech ball. The Yellow Jackets have hit seven threes of this first half. Clemson just two. I mean, you got to throw it in there. There's a mismatch right here. Dongo against Hunter. Hall oh, intercepts it. I mean, it's not going to show up in the stat sheet, but that was a heck of a job on post defense by Dillon. Hall soaring and scoring. Clemson back in front. P.J. Hall almost has a first half double-double, 13 points, nine rebounds. Timeout, Georgia Tech with 20 left of the half. We'll be right back. This has been a really fun, competitive first half, a little ACC after dark after a chaotic finish in Raleigh before us. NC State coming back to win that game against Wake Forest. Jay Alter, Debbie Antonelli with you. You can't ask for a closer, more competitive game than this one. And I think the Georgia Tech 10-0 run was in large part uh, the playmaking ability of Miles Kelly. 10 seconds left to this first half. Here's George. Off to Kelly. Puts it up. Would have been good if it went. Rimmed out, and Clemson clings to a two-point halftime advantage. P.J. Hall, like he's been all season, the go-to guy for the Tigers. 13 points, nine rebounds to lead the way. Clemson a two-point lead at the break. He's made it look so easy, particularly on the glass, Debbie, where Clemson out-rebounded Georgia Tech 23-13 to in the first half. Obviously, having that near 6'11 frame helps, but his positioning, he's always where he should be on the court. I think he has excellent footwork. I think his timing is terrific on the glass. I think he loves the responsibility of leading this team. 
And his off-season work because of injury in years past have really allowed his conditioning to be at this level at this time of the year. Georgia Tech starts with the ball trailing by two. Trying to snap a five-game losing streak on the road against one of the ACC top teams. I'm waiting for Miles Kelly to get going. Has it here. Turnaround jumper. Got it. I think they have to play through him. I think with the ball, he is absolutely explosive. And he doesn't need a lot of time or space. He can occupy that off the bounce with his ability to get to the places he wants to go with the ball. Inside the hall. Stays with it. Doesn't drop another offensive rebound for Ian Shefflin. I mean, Shefflin just thrives in his role. He's a star on the glass for Clemson. Five offensive rebounds for Shefflin tonight. He cashes in for the two. Now diving for the ball. George wins it, keeps it alive for the Yellow Jackets. Five seconds to shoot. Kelly decides to give it up for Reeves. Rattled in and out, no good. That possession started with a ball screen with George and with Dongo. And they got the switch. Then they re-screened and then they re they re-switched. When you have that matchup, that's the next level for a freshman point guard is recognizing that and taking advantage of it. Watch Miles Kelly with a little fadeaway, and then he and Joe Girard just clock heads. Both holding their head back up the floor. And you can see in the previous four games, Jay, Miles was two for 25. That's 8%. Since then, he's shooting the ball at a much better rate. And I think he looks like he's adjusted to what Damon Stoudemire wants him to do offensively. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's a sample size of his last eight games. The first four, two of 25. The last four, 14 of 31. But he's not just a three-point threat, too. He can beat you in many ways. I mean, he can go from one end of the floor to the other in three and a half, maybe four dribbles. I tend to lean towards three and a half for him. He's so quick. Has it here. There's a switch. Lost his footing. That's how quick he is. <laughs> Great pass. Rejected, but a foul called. Shefflin and Hall collapsed underneath to deny Tyson Claude. I mean, this is just a good feed to the weak side. Wow. Hall got it clean. The foul was called on Shefflin. Sunday afternoon, our ACC Network women's basketball doubleheader tips off in Raleigh, the number four Wolfpack hosting Duke, and then a top 25 matchup, Louisville at North Carolina. That's Sunday right here on ACC Network. By design, the students in the second half are behind the visiting team's basket. That's quite a sight right there, shooting, in, shooting into that sight. And this was a late tip on a Tuesday night, but the student section loud and proud all night long. Gerard pull up pop, missed it. Another offensive rebound for Clemson. Foul on the floor. It's really good flash by Shefflin to the nail with P.J. posting so hard. He had a clean lane, but he picks up the foul. And that's the third foul on Dongo. You know, I'm, I keep talking about how hard P.J. posts up in the block. It is so valuable to have that size and frame and that skill set to change the space for everyone else to be able to play off it. Cross-court pass. Tees up Hunter, drives the lane, gets the foul. And one opportunity coming for Chase Hunter. That's an IQ play by Shefflin because that quicks one more. 
You go reverse and then you go swing back to the top. That gives Hunter a driving lane. Give that assist to Shefflin. And he completes the three-point play. Seven points tonight for Chase Hunter. And a five-point lead for Clemson. And Coach Stoudemire knows that Clemson is switching in, in the middle third in these actions right here. You can get the right matchup with Miles Kelly if you bring a big to him. Shot clock under 10. And P.J. Hall's been stuck on this matchup a couple of times. George the, got him up in the air, the floater. But that's the first time that George has gotten by P.J. Hall on the perimeter. Hall has played very good perimeter defense, keeping him in front. 10 points for Nathan George. He leads the Yellow Jackets. Girard, deep three, buries it. Joe Girard, unlimited range. Great twist of that screen by P.J. Hall. Set the screen in one angle, and then he twists it to the other angle to allow Joe Girard to have that separation. George trying to create. Misfires from three. Hall, another rebound. He already has a double-double. Up ahead. Hunter, the scoop to the hoop. Timeout, Georgia Tech. Perfect two for two from three. It was funny, we were watching him earlier today as he's in the top five for ACC made threes. And I asked you, how many threes do you think he's attempted in his life? Between the driveway, between practice, <laughs> between shoot around, yeah. between games. I said an easy million. A million threes. I think so. I mean, that's what he does. I mean, look at that. Look what. Look at his presence on this graphic. I mean, and Dennis look at the Scott, names he's with. He's sitting at home right now watching this game going, I hope he doesn't catch me tonight. Not against my guys, <laughs> right? Still a long way to go to J.J. Redick. It's interesting seeing Joseph Girard's name with a yeah. Clemson Tiger paw print. Shouldn't it be a dual logo there? A split, if you will. Yeah. He returns to the Dome on February 10th to play his former team. Coleman corner three, out of the timeout, drills it exactly what the Yellow Jackets needed. So in the first half, Clemson went up nine. Damon Stoudemire called timeout. They went on a 10-0 run and took a one-point lead. Now they're showing another possession to zone, and Debo Coleman came off in that 10-0 run and hit a couple of threes, right? Gerard missed it that time. Coleman kept it in, but gave it right back to Clemson. Down low, Shefflin draws the foul. That is muscle on muscle on that one. A big night in here last night. It was a close one for a while, but Clemson pulled away. And uh, we talk about the managers being just so valuable to the success of their respective programs. No doubt about it. And you mentioned how busy little John Coliseum has been between basketball and manager games. And how about gymnastics? Clemson first year program. They are hosting the meet this Sunday on ACC Network at four. And in the inaugural meet of this first year program, the highest inaugural meet score in D1 history. That's Lily Lippett, who was the ACC Newcomer of the Week. And that takes newcomer to a whole new level when it's your first year as a program. And you got to give a shout out to Jim Clements, the president, and Graham Neff, the athletic director here. In the last few years, they've added softball, women's lacrosse, and gymnastics. Wow. It's very impressive. That's a action speak louder than words by Clemson to support those women's sports and not only start them, but give them the fabulous resources that they have, the facilities here. Oh, it's incredible. Off the charts. Foul, frustration foul against Godfrey there. And in the last less than 10 years, Little John is over, you know, on, on a renovation. The basketball practice facilities are outstanding. The weight room is awesome. 
And then we didn't even talk about Dabo World over there. That's a whole <laughs> other thing. Exactly. Now this has been a close competitive game throughout. Late night action in the ACC. Georgia Tech trailing by five, but within striking distance by Dongo back into the game. Has it here? Good recognition of the mismatch. You see the help, and then you see the backside cutters. Dongo has a chance right there to try to bury that guard, that switch. I think it was Dylan Hunter it was. that was on him. Six inches yeah, between those two. Back him down, bury him inside, and use your skill set in the paint. Shot clock at eight. Dongo puts it up and in off the you, glass. This young man is talented. He's explosive. He's got a great cadence about his ability to read the defense, especially looking on the weak side for cutters. Very patient. Another offensive rebound. Shefflin puts it up and in. That's 12 offensive rebounds. And Shefflin stays down, grabbing his left leg. I'm going to guess by his, and we're not supposed to assume, but I, I think it's a cramp. I mean, Shefflin and Hall are just pounding the boards tonight. Their offensive rebounding has allowed Clemson to have some separation. 12 offensive rebounds, nine of them belong to Shefflin and Hall, and Shefflin walking off under his own power. That is great to see. He's all smiles. That was a really good read by you, Debbie, because I didn't know what happened. I mean, he immediately grabbed the back of his calf. And you just... That's painful. Whatever you land like that, you worry that it could be that, but I think you said cramp right away, and hopefully that's all it is. Well, you start drinking fluids, pound the, the fluids, and then roll it out. Get a little massage over there. So nine rebounds on the night for Shefflin to go along with eight points. Brad Crow, the longtime athletic trainer for Clemson, doing a terrific job keeping these guys in top-notch form. Knocked away, P.J. Hall. He's had a couple of takeaways. Already a double-double tonight. Godfrey trying to spin his way free. Draws the foul. I mean, there were three whistles on that one. <laughs> I mean, look how quick the spin is. And Coleman just loses his balance a little bit there because the spin off of Godfrey. That's a tough play right there. Now, we were talking about athletic parents earlier giving props to Brandy Lewis, the mother of Chase and Dylan Hunter, about R.J. Godfrey, who his father, Randall, played 11 years in the NFL as a linebacker. Six points and a board tonight for the sophomore from Sewanee, Georgia. Lucas McKay on the staff for Brad Brown now gave me a great stat about Godfrey. They're 6-0 and when he scores in double figures. So he can have an impact on the game. He's been a big bright spot off the bench for this Tigers team. Miles Kelly. Only seven points tonight. He usually has double that. Five seconds to shoot. Kelly in trouble, off the Sturdivant. Has to hoist it, banks it in. Kyle Sturdivant cuts the lead in half. After seven threes in the first half, that's her second in the second half. Wiggins. Dumps it inside. Hall with a big mismatch working on Kyle Sturdivant. 
Eight inches separate those two. See, that's a mature offensive possession. Sturdivant looks at the clock on the other end. He knows he's got to let it fly. Still counts as three. Godfrey slams it home. R.J. Godfrey, he's had two rim rockers tonight. I mean, it can be a wear down effect when Georgia Tech doesn't have the same depth on the front line that Clemson has. By Dongo. Passes out of the double team, finds Kelly for three. Can't knock it down. Dongo got the rebound, couldn't put it home, and a foul called. I mean, Clemson is really locked in and connected on the defensive end. Ten eyes watching the ball, not allowing any back cuts and contesting everything. How about this? At the rim, Godfrey making himself available. He's got a lot of muscle on that frame, and his skill set started to come along. And Still, you said it earlier. Check. Clemson 6 0 when Godfrey scores 10 or more. He's up to eight tonight. Two great dunks there, which gets the student section and terrific crowd into the game. And Clemson's needed them here at home. Georgia Tech is giving the Tigers everything they can handle. I think it's been a, a really good defensive game plan by Brad Brownell because coming into the game, I mean, Georgia Tech's a good three-point shooting team. They make seven a game, but the switching man-to-man -man has been a little bit of a softer cover, if you will, right? Keeping Georgia Tech out of the paint, not allowing them off the bounce to get inside and set up their three-point shooting. But you gotta have a balance there, but you're giving up something when you're, when you're protecting inside out and you're giving up some threes. Now the counter for Clemson is they've been able to get to the free throw line and they've been all over the offensive glass. The extra pass finds Hunter. Can't connect. And by Dongo called for the travel. He just lost his balance there. So ball stays with Clemson underneath their own hoop, leading by four. Hall calling for it, gets it, muscles it home. He has 17 points to go along with 12 rebounds tonight. That's situational offense and those baseline out of bounds. You have to execute on those. I think Brad Brownell usually scores on about eight out of 10 of those. Third of it. Shot clock at eight. Clemson's been difficult to break down defensively, but Sturdivant does just that. So that's what I'm talking about. The defense tonight for Clemson has been designed to keep them out of the paint. Sturdivant doing a nice job coming off the bench. Here's Hall. Finds Girard. Give and go. Shot clock down to five. Hall, eyes on the timer. Turnaround. Missed it. Good weak side board by Dongo. Sturdivant. Back to back, big time makes. Kyle Sturdivant has Tech back within one. How many times did Damon Stoudemire talk to his team today about where they set their screens in the middle third? That was a screen that was set inside the three-point line that allowed him to come off that and knock it down. Georgia Tech's made six of their last eight, the last two to Sturdivant, and that's a goaltend. Dongo was in the cylinder there, so count the bucket for P.J. Hall. He's now up to 19. The next dead ball, they will look at it. This is what I'm talking about. Look at Dongo sets that screen. And if you're in P, if you're PJ Hall and you're in a little bit of drop coverage right there, that's hard to get out in the scoring range and not and contest that shot because the quality of that play right there was 
Excellent by Georgia Tech. Quality of the shot, the quality of the screen, all of it. One possession game. Georgia Tech's made 10 threes tonight. And 11th would tie it at 55. Nobody home. Miscommunication there. Dongo and Claude on different wavelengths, and that's a turnover. And Clemson has mixed up when and if they bring the double to Dongo. Like I said before, it's hard to speed him up. I mean, he plays with a maturity uh, uh, beyond a freshman. Hall, good fake, kicks it out, Gerard. Back to Hall, under five on the shot clock. Hall in attack mode, draws the foul on the floor. Spaced out, shooters in the corner, and Gerard and Hall working in the middle third. You see the foul right there grabbing the arm. P.J. Hall going back to the free throw line. And Clemson in the bonus the rest of the way. And Hall now up to 20, making the front end of the one and one. Saturday, terrific triple header right here on ACC Network. The Tigers are in Tallahassee to tip things off at four. Georgia Tech hosting Virginia at six, and then the nightcap at Cameron Indoor, Pittsburgh at Duke. P.J. Hall, 21 points, 12 rebounds tonight, and there's still nine minutes left in this game. The ninth time he's been over the 20-point mark, the fourth double-double of the season, 11th of his career. And he has made it look easy tonight. Georgia Tech still within striking distance. Third event. Off the mark that time. Don Go couldn't quite put it home, but it'll stay with Georgia Tech. Now, this is what it's been for the Yellow Jackets in these last five games. They're right there in the second half, but have nothing to show for it, says their head coach, Damon Stoudemire. On a five-game losing streak, and they could have won all five of them. Kelly rejected. And a foul called. Jack Clark with a hip check. That's his first. Clemson went through this set right here, this concept, over and over and shoot around today. You see the foul by Clark, but you get to see the block by Hall. Kelly been quiet in the second half, finds Sturdivant, who's been the catalyst, and he delivers again. Kyle Sturdivant, the spark plug off the bench. You got a nice mix of point guards, right? You got the young freshman who's got explosiveness and some size on the top of the floor, and then you've got the veteran player in Kyle Sturdivant who can come in and give you a different rhythm to your team. Back to a one-possession game. Hall calling for it. Well, they missed him. Five seconds to shoot. Clark off the mark. Another offensive rebound, and it's Shefflin. His fifth offensive board of the night, 10 rebounds total. Dumps it down to Hall, fighting through, gets it to go. P.J. Hall up to 23 tonight. P.J. never gave up on the post up in that possession. That was a clinic on how to shape up to the ball. Sturdivant's had the hot hand. Working on Clark, gives it up, Reeves, hits it from three. Kawasi Reeves and Georgia Tech back within two. He is money in the deep corner. How about the fight in Georgia Tech? Great hustle, Sturdivant, grabbed the ball, called the timeout. 
Georgia Tech not playing like a team that's just 500 on the season and on a five game losing streak. You want to win on the road, you make plays like Kyle Sturvin just made. And then you find a way to try to keep PJ from catching in the front of the paint, front of the rim. Reeves, deep corner, couple of triples tonight. Two point game between Georgia Tech and Clemson. And in the second half, these two teams offensively have taken over because the defense really been dominant, not just in the first half, but all season long for Clemson and Georgia Tech. And yet the offense has just exploded, Debbie. Yeah, I think Georgia Tech has sprinkled a little zone, uh, usually coming off a timeout. Should change the rhythm of the, the game a little bit. And then Clemson and their switching man to man here in the second half has kept Georgia Tech out of the paint. Again, the difference for Brad Brownell is the, their ability to get to the free throw line, whereas a team, they're 14 for 16. It has countered a little bit the 11 three-point made baskets by Georgia Tech. Yeah, Georgia Tech shooting 63%. And now they're changing their ball screen coverage again. Now they're going to look at a trap. Sturdivant somehow found Kelly. Shot clock at seven. Miles Kelly only has two points in the second half. Almost lost his pivot foot. Sturdivant has to heave it off the mark. Good change by Brad Brown now. We were talking about them switching. This time they come with a trap on the ball screen. I like the change. Let's see if that was a one possession thing if they stay in it. Shefflin's had a real impact on the glass tonight. Back into the game, which is good to see. Shot clock down to four. Both of these teams waiting for the end of the shot clock. Gerard just heaves it. That's not a quality look. P.J. Hall back into the game for Clemson. He has been the catalyst tonight. 23 points, 12 rebounds. Hall and Shefflin have 10 offensive rebounds combined. Georgia Tech, who's number two in the ACC in offensive rebounding, has eight. Dongo. Dongo With really swipes. Look how he plays low. He's low man wins in those situations, but he turns it over. Hunter fouled on his way to the rim. Lost the handle a little bit in transition. Third foul on Kelly. Oh, so this is what it's been for Georgia Tech since conference play began. They're in every single game, but Damon Stoudemire, first-year head coach, told us we've got nothing to show for it. They were 8-3 and three with wins against Mississippi State at Duke, but in their last five games, they've lost them all, all games that they were right there in the second half. In, in four of them, they actually had second-half leads but they haven't been able to finish. Is it deja vu all over again for Damon Sotomayor tonight? He talked about these moments inside the game. I mean, they've done an excellent job putting some game pressure on Clemson at, uh, at home. George back running the offense. A little bit more size if Clemson elects to trap the, that ball screen action. Kelly in attack mode. Tried to find George, who couldn't handle it. That's the Clemson defense you've come to expect under Brad Brownell. Well, they're coming off the last two games where they gave up 51% from the floor to Boston College and 54% from the floor to Virginia Tech. You usually don't see that. Gerard rejected. Dongo got there. Georgia Tech has numbers with Gerard trailing behind. Does well to hustle back. Reeves travels. Another have, Georgia Tech turnover. We've got two uh, different whistles here. We've got a travel and a foul. The officials are coming together. What did you see? Travel. Yeah, I saw travel. I, I prefer the violation before the foul every time. Why is that? I don't want to put a foul on a kid, another kid and let him, you know, 
have to go over and sit on the bench or if there be free throws, let's keep the game moving. Go Tigers! Yeah, travel's the right traveled. call. Georgia Tech, six turnovers this half. They only had two the entire first half. So the Clemson defense is dialed in down the stretch here. I thought it started in practice yesterday. I was here for Clemson's practice, and uh, Brad Brownell was very intentional and demanding about what he expected and the game plan for Georgia Tech. And I, I think they've executed well to this point. Now you got to close off games, so now you can't have any game slippage. And that's what Georgia Tech has had in these moments. That's what we talked to Damon Stoudemire about. You know, he, it's, a, it's an angle, it's a rebound, it's a closeout, it's, it's the detail inside the game. You have to finish it off strong. Execution right here matters for both clubs. Five-point lead for Clemson. They haven't been able to deliver that knockout punch tonight. Miles Kelly trying to get going. Runner to the rim. And it's a one-possession game. And Kelly commits the foul. That's his fourth. Look at the explosive, the quickness as we've been talking about it all game. When he makes up his mind, he wants to turn a corner. I don't think anybody in the league can guard his quickness, but he's got to be more assertive at times in the game. I think he gets some switches and he defers. Hunter shooting two here. Everyone on the court thought it was a one and one. Clemson has not made a basket in three minutes and 26 seconds, but as Debbie pointed out, they have done an excellent job getting to the foul line all game. They've taken 21 free throws, 14 of which have come in this second half. Hunter misses them both. Still a one possession game with four minutes left in regulation. Clemson clinging to a three point lead. Sturdivant working on Hall. Dongo wants it and gets it. The freshman muscling it, doesn't drop, and Gerard has it for Clemson. <laughs> a lot of activity on the glass. Here's Hall, righty hook, beautiful P.J. Hall, 26 points tonight. I mean, he just buries Claude in the rim. George spinning his way free, draws the foul. Here in Clemson, they call P.J. Hall the Hall-American. I mean, two feet in the paint, two points. Forget about it. The Hall-American, P.J. Hall, 26 and 12. He's been fantastic in the paint. He's been all over the glass. He's been able to work his way to the free throw line. He's even buried a triple. When are they going to name that sandwich and Sully's after him? <laughs> on College Ave, I ran into PJ at breakfast this morning. He was knocking down a couple of sandwiches. <laughs> you know what? He, he's, uh, I had a nice conversation with him. Actually, I asked PJ, what's the first thing you look at on the stat sheet after the game? He said, the first thing I look at is turnovers. Well, right now, Clemson's only turned the ball over eight times. The next thing he looks at is rebounds. Well, Clemson's done a really good job. They are plus nine on the boards, and he's got 12. Well, he's got to be pleased with that when he looks at the stat sheet after this game, should they get a win. But Hall there's a lot guarding of, lot Kelly. Of, a lot of game left here. Great defensive stand by Clemson coming out of the timeout. Under three minutes left now in regulation. See, that's where Miles has got to pull up off the glass. 
Maybe got one dribble too deep. Hall calling for it. Shefflin instead to the rim, lays it up and in. Ian Shefflin. I mean, there's been a couple of weight room buckets by Shefflin and Hall tonight. You know, but here's what's happened coming off the timeout for Coach Stoudemire. He has decided, and so has Miles Kelly, that he's going to put the ball on the deck and attack the rim. Shot got blocked the last time. This time he's going to shoot free throws. Oh, they called it on the floor? I thought he was shooting. I did too. Right back to Kelly. Everything working through Miles Kelly right now for Georgia Tech. Pulls up from three. Can't knock it down. Shefflin, another rebound for Clemson. 12 for him tonight. I like the mentality of Miles Kelly, though. He wants the ball right now in the winning time. The winning time might be slipping away under two minutes to go. Clemson now a seven point lead. Hall. Oh. Count the bucket. P.J. Hall fired up. P.J. Hall is a pretty emotional guy, but you don't usually see this much out of him. What a finish. So the whistle was for a potential goaltend, even though the ball ended up going in anyway. No foul on the play. Georgia Tech, now or never time. Yellow Jackets trying to avoid a six-game losing streak. Sturdivant a three, and he's fouled. Hall commits the foul. That's the last thing you can do, because now Sturdivant's going to get three at the line. Maybe a little too pumped up, P.J. Hall. He immediately looks at Coach Brownell. It was my bad. Sturdivant is the best free throw shooter for Georgia Tech. 84%. Now that ends a 6 0 Clemson run over the last two minutes. Thursday night at 10 Eastern. Women's basketball doubleheader, and then the nothing but net crew will break down the night in the ACC. You don't want to miss it right here on ACC Network. So this game was 62-59, one possession game. Georgia Tech within striking distance like they've been in all five of their losses during this stretch. And Clemson down the stretch has made winning plays up until that P.J. Hall foul. Back to a two possession game. Shefflin takes the timeout. You got to get open. Both Chase Hunter and Joe Girard were just staring at the ball. We'll step aside for get 30 open, seconds. Jay. Get open. <laughs> get open. First year head coach David Stoudemire in the midst of a frustrating stretch. His team was eight and three not too long ago with wins against. Duke and Mississippi State now on a five game losing streak a minute 33 for making it a six game losing streak it, it's the same things down the right. stretch it's not making winning plays size on the ball right here everybody guarding face guarding you're right probably switching here you can't let the ball come in that easily both teams in a bonus Georgia Tech does have one timeout Clemson's got two. Possession arrow is with the Tigers. Kelly guarding Gerard. He has four fouls. Shot clock down to seven. Shefflin on the drive right to the rim. Missed it. And they're going to take a, a look at the monitor to see who it was off of last. That's the first time we've seen that set where Clemson's got one four low and bring the late ghost screen up from Shefflin. 
I think that was too slow developing play with the ball in Joe Girard's hands. Who touched it last? Paul or Dongo? The call on the floor was... Georgia Tech ball on the floor. But they pretty immediately went to, we're gonna review. I mean, what an incredible crew we have tonight. Roger Ayers, Lee Cassell, and Lamar Simpson. This is a veteran group. I just don't know if they'll get a great look at this. And the Clemson fans have been terrific tonight. ACC after dark, late night on a Tuesday night. Student section's been loud and proud all night long. And it is Georgia Tech ball. Clemson a couple of stops away from back-to-back -back wins and improving the 13 and four on the year. We'll con continue what's been a really strong season for this Tigers team. Joe Lenardi, as it stands, ESPN's bracketologist has Clemson as a five seed. Georgia Tech, no field goals in the last three minutes and 13 seconds. Down the stretch during this losing streak, that's what's hurt them more of the same tonight. Can they find a miracle here in the final minute? Reeves off the screen, got a great look and drilled it. Kowasi Reeves cuts the lead in half. 52 seconds left, one possession game. That was great execution. Got to have a really good stop here by Georgia Tech because all five players on the floor are excellent free throw shooters. Shefflin would be the least, and he's at 74%. But he's the furthest away from the ball. Last, I think you play hard defense right here. Yeah, last thing you want to do if you're Damon Stoudemire, is foul. One possession game, need a stop. You got to go inside to P.J. Hall. I think that's that would be an answer here and an option. That high-low game has definitely worked. Hall's got 28 points tonight. There they go is. right to him, missed it. Gets his own miss. And Georgia Tech, do you foul here or not? No, you play good D. Reeves decides to. There was a nine second separation from the shot clock and the game clock. Offensive rebounding all game for the Tigers. It's been a problem for Georgia Tech. And then you foul Joe Girard. I would have let the trap play out a little bit longer, Jay. Only 91% at the free throw line. <laughs> now, P.J. Hall, 28 points tonight, but that 13th rebound, which ties a career high, might have been the biggest thing he's done tonight. And we've used the phrase winning plays all night long. That was a winning play there for Hall. You got to know where Reeves is. He's coming off that flare from Dongo. George takes it himself and buries it. I mean, you substitute out Joe Girard so you get a defensive player. Timeout, Brad Brownell. You put Clark in and he's in the game to not give up that three with some more length. A bigger defender. Handle the Tigers clinging to a two point lead. 12.8 seconds left. Tigers still have one timeout and the ball. Cut hard. Georgia Tech trying to get a steal right away, then, then a foul. Foul comes in, sends Chase Hunter to the foul line to shoot two. And this is where Clemson should be good at closing out games because of what we said before their ability to put five good free throw shooters on the floor. Hunter three for three 
from the foul line tonight. He's 87% on the season. And now a chance to make it a two possession game. Miles Kelly comes back in for the Yellow Jackets. Regardless of this free throw, you don't need a three right away. I think you can extend the game by driving it quick. Miles Kelly, like I said in the first half, he only needs three, three and a half dribbles to go from one end to the other. Missed it. One possession game. Georgia Tech has life. Seven seconds left. George for the tie. Got it! Nathan George drills it. Timeout, Brad Brownell as the freshman phenom, fearless on the road, ties it at 71. Knowing time and score. They put three more ticks back on the clock, so 2.6 to work with for Clemson. What do you do here? You, you got time for two dribbles and then a shot. And you you got to, um, Shuffling can run the baseline. If you can inbound it towards midcourt. If you're Georgia Tech, you want to make Clemson come back to the basketball, not a pass that goes over the top. Shefflin runs the baseline, heaves it. And it's intercepted. Dongo throws it up. Oh, it almost went. And we are headed to overtime. With a minute 33 to go. And yet the Tigers have let it slip late and now have to go to overtime to try and win this at home. You see P.J. Hall trying to encourage the guys right here because I, I thought they did have a little dip in their body language. Now the momentum is with Georgia Tech on the road and Miles Kelly, I thought coming off that timeout, Jay, at that moment, 68-60, Miles Kelly decided three possessions in a row, he put his head down and tried to drive, tried to make a play. Rejump to start overtime. Brad Brownell says, no, that was off Dongo. Should be Clemson basketball. And it is. So Clemson starts with the ball. How do you mentally reset as a player quickly, Debbie? You got to get through your acceleration here on your sets. You got to pound the glass. You got to do all the things that you did to give yourself a, a lead. If you're Clemson, there has to be a part of you that's disappointed you let an eight-point lead slip oh, no with just a minute 30 left. That's why I think their body language dipped. You can't let that affect you here in overtime, though. Gerard back to Dylan Hunter, into P.J. Hall, spins his way in, rolls, doesn't drop. And a foul on the offensive rebound. That is now 15 offensive yeah, rebounds for exactly. Clemson. Exactly. Look at Damon Stoudemire. He's just shaking his head. They have not been able to keep Clemson off the glass. It's a great spin inside. Look at Shefflin fighting for position. And then from the perimeter, it's Chase Hunter that gets the glass. by Dongo, commits his fourth foul. So both Kelly and Dongo with four to play with in overtime. Hunter makes them both. He's up to 14 points tonight. George puts it up. The slam ties on Claude. That's a set from the bench. It's the first time we've seen them run that. Saving it. Come on, Clemson! 
Dylan Hunter leaves it for Shefflin. Puts it up and in. He's still battling through a cramp. Calls over to the bench. Left the game earlier with a cramp. Was able to work it out over on the sideline. And now limping off for R.J. Godfrey. He has battled tonight. Missed some big time finish right here. Pump fake. And then immediately you see him grab the back of his calf. What an effort. 12 points, 12 rebounds for Shefflin. The last bucket uh, gives Clemson a two-point lead. Foul called on the floor against Girard. I mean, another play by George. He just leaves it at the rim for Claude. Girard got caught on a switch and a post-up, and that's a possession that Georgia Tech can win in that matchup. By Dongo shooting one and one. Missed the front end. Inside to Hall, and that's a career-high 30 for P.J. Hall. Dongo went right into Hall, who's called for the foul. P.J. shaping up all game. He's almost behind the backboard by the time he releases that. They call him the Hall American. Well, tonight he's made his case for why he should be an all ACC first teamer and an all American at the end of the season. 30 points, 14 rebounds. And Knowing P.J. Hall like we do, he doesn't care about the numbers. He just wants to walk That's out right. a little John Coliseum with the win. <laughs> Dongo made them both. That's now nine straight games in double figures for the Senegalese sensation in his freshman season for Georgia Tech. Gerard, quick trigger, missed it. And that's a double-double for Baidongo, 11 points, 10 rebounds. Georgia Tech continuing to battle on the road in overtime. Three minutes to go, trailing by two. They that switch. Kick to the corner, Reeves buries it. Kowasi Reeves fires Georgia Tech in front. Yeah, he's money. That's at least three triples in that deep corner. Five threes on the night for Reeves. The first lead since it was 30 to 28. Godfrey spinning his way free. Missed it. Hall, he can't clean up the spill. Ball's loose. Miles Kelly has it. Georgia Tech leading for the first time since the first half. Can they steal one on the road with two minutes to go here in overtime? They're just going two-man game with George and Dongo. The two freshmen. Five seconds to shoot. Dongo leaves it off for Claude. And a foul called. How about the poise and the trust that Damon Stoudemire has of these two freshmen? I mean, he's gone to him the last couple of trips down the floor, clears it out, puts Reeves in the deep corner opposite the ball. 
And for Clemson, they commit that foul with two seconds on the shot clock. Claude rattles it home. Shefflin comes back in. He's been battling cramps in this second half in overtime. Three point lead for Georgia Tech. Does Clemson have a punch back here in OT? Hall, a career high 30. Hands off Gerard. Shefflin in attack mode through contact gets it to go. Same set, different side of the floor. Dongo, the spin, tees up Claude, missed it, a foul call. So ties on Claude right back to the foul line where he just made two. I mean, what a play. What an incredible play. I mean, Coach Zetemauer is just going to the same thing over and over. Clear it out, two-man game. Look for that 45 cut on the weak side. P.J. rotates over to help. And Claude has a lane. What an effort by Damon Stoudemire, this Georgia Tech team. They trailed the entire second half until Nathan George tied it with 2.3 to go. Now have the lead here in overtime. Can they finish? That's the one thing that has escaped them in this five-game losing streak. They've been in positions to win. They have not finished. Big test here. One minute left in the extra session. Hunter for the tie. Missed it. Shefflin offensive rebound, lays it up and in. Ian Shefflin, 16 points. A double-double for him, 13 rebounds. You see a sense of urgency now in Clemson. Crowd's in it. Trying to will this team to the finish line. Right back to Dongo. Everything working through the freshman. And he travels. Big time defensive stop. Clemson with the basketball, trailing by one. So you run your sets here, Jay, and you look for P.J. Hall on the inside, and you've been dominating the offensive glass all game. So you're going to take this shot with time to get to the offensive board. You're not trying to go for, to the end. You just run your stuff right here and accelerate through and look for P.J. All calling for it, and a foul called on the floor. So P.J. Hall, an opportunity to take the lead from the foul line. He already has a career high, 30 points and 15 rebounds. Wait, Shefflin's really struggling through the, yep. the cramps right now. He's trying. And that is the fifth foul on the freshman by Dongo, who has touched the ball every possession for Georgia Tech in overtime. He has battled against one of the best bigs in the ACC and the entire country tonight. Valiant effort for that young man. Now can his team hang on to this lead for the final 23 seconds? B.J. Hall trying to fire Clemson back in front from the foul line. Both teams with a timeout remaining. You better be ready to box out if you're Georgia Tech right here. Hall missed it. So the best he can do is tie it at 82. 
And you're right about the box out. Clemson 17 offensive rebounds tonight. Damon Stoudemire just told Roger Ayers he wants a timeout. And he gets it. Hall ties it at 82. Damon Stoudemire, an opportunity here to draw up a winning play on the road. You have to expect Georgia Tech's going to hold for the last shot. Absolutely. Uh, you're, you're just changed personnel. Jack uh, Clark's getting another chance right here on yeah. a defensive possession. Clark's first action in nine games. He's been out injured. This is a big spot. Brad Brownell trusting the transfer from NC State. He gave up a three to George earlier. Here we go, a fun finish coming. Already in overtime, under 15 seconds to go. I think Miles Kelly keeps it. Gives it off to George, who hit the game-tying three. Right to the rim. Loose ball underneath, and Clemson forces the turnover. Brown Brownell takes his final timeout, and the Tigers a chance to win it here with 2.5 left in overtime. I mean, this is good defense right here by Clemson. I think that's Godfrey that gets a hand on it. And Kelly just can't handle it right there. So while the ball itself never went out of bounds, Kelly Kelly's touched hands. it while his hand was out of bounds. Ethan, well, they're going to take a look at it. If any part of your body is touching the ball and out of bounds, falls out of, it's out of bounds. And I think that's exactly what happened underneath the hoop for Miles Kelly there. Is he out? Yes, yes he's out. That left hand. Mm -hmm. Right there. So assuming that it will stay Clemson ball, Debbie, what do you do here if yeah. you're Brad Brown out? Well, you also are looking at the clock while you're over there to make sure the right time is on the clock. Uh, I, they tried to throw a direct pass, Christian Leitner style, from the baseline to P.J. Hall at the logo on the other end of the floor. You might want to consider something like that, but you do have two dribbles. Once again, you, you, can, ha you can get two dribbles and a shot off. The timeout allows P.J. Hall to get back on the floor. Remember, he was out on a defensive possession. And Joe Girard will sub in as well. You got to screen hard. You got to cut hard. You got to accelerate through your stuff right here. The officials are still over at the so, monitor. So Miles Kelly's hand was out of bounds, but was he touching the ball at the time his hand was out of bounds? I'm sure that's what they're looking at, plus the time. Okay, so right here, his hand's inbounds. Now his hand's out of bounds. Is he touching the ball? Right there? Yeah. He, he's not touching the ball right there. Look at the bounce of it. It's not spinning, is it? Is that off his foot? It, foot underneath? You have to look at the rotation of the ball, too. They did put 2.9 on the clock, so. And it is Clemson ball. So you might have three dribbles. Shefflin cannot run the baseline. That's right, spot throwing. I got it. 
Shefflin heaves it, looking for Hall, rips it away. P.J. for the win. And we are headed to double overtime here in Clemson. What a game. By Dongo on the court, having fouled out for Georgia Tech. Advantage again, front line to Clemson. Tigers win the tip. They're going to show zone here to start this second overtime. And with Dongo out, they just really don't have anybody to D up Hall. You really got to communicate where Gerard is. Hunter wide open. Missed it. Shefflin, another offensive rebound. What a night Ian Shefflin has had. Battling cramps for the entire second half at overtime. He has now got his seventh offensive rebound. 14 rebounds on the night. I mean, it's one thing to understand angles and read the ball off the rim. It's another to have the incredible will that Shefflin has to go to the glass every time. He carves out space so nicely for himself with that big wide frame. Missed them both. Hall taps the rebound to Hunter. Possession stays alive. That's now 20 offensive rebounds for Clemson in this game. Can they cash in? Chaplin spinning his way through and a foul call. Another offensive glass. What a great effort by Hall. It's a battle of wills right now, Jay. That's exactly what it is. 18 points, 14 rebounds for Shefflin. Can Clemson cling to this two-point lead here in double overtime? George left it off for Claude, couldn't handle it. Hunter, right to the rim, everything but the finish. Brad Brownell is livid, storming onto the floor. Wants this to be reviewed. Says it was off of Georgia Tech last. David Stoudemire's now at midcourt. Take another look, who touched it last? Yeah, that's off Georgia Tech. And Roger Ayers comes over to tell us it cannot be reviewed. They just showed it up on the video board. This home crowd is tired, it's late, and they're unhappy. And the SO club is probably closing. <laughs> Kelly off the bounce into traffic, missed it, but taps it home. Miles Kelly, that's a gutsy play. I keep waiting for Miles Kelly. This is his time right here. Here's Chase Hunter. Attacks the rim again, draws the foul. He has done well getting himself to the foul line tonight where he's six of seven. Miles Kelly in the paint with an extra effort play and an offensive rebound. Chase with a good take right there, drawing contact to get a trip to the line. He's been very aggressive in the overtimes. The last couple of possessions, I mean, the last trip down, he basically missed a layup. Almost expected contact and it never came, so he put too much on it. Flew right by the rim. 
Makes them both, 16 points on the nice for Chase Hunter. Debo Coleman checks into the game for Georgia Tech. He's a three-point threat. Under three minutes left in double overtime. Clemson, a two-point lead. Foul off the ball. And Chase Hunter's trying to say that Miles Kelly was holding his arm, but I think Hunter was holding Kelly, and you got to give him room to move. There's got to be a freedom of movement there. Can't displace him. Kelly shooting into the Clemson student section. Makes one of two. 12 points for Kelly on the night. Zone. Here's P.J. Hall. Missed it. And Georgia Tech gets the rebound. Do you go back to Kelly here? I do. Miles Kelly in attack mode, right to the rim. Miles Kelly fires the Yellow Jackets back in front. Explosive off the bounce with his first step all night. Staying in the zone. P.J. Hall working out of the short corner. Here's Gerard, deep three, off the mark. Kelly the rebound, he thinks he was hit. And Lee Casale stops play. David Stoudemire pointing at the clock. I think they're trying to decide if they're going to look at it or not. Saying under two minutes, review this. They can obviously review it any time if they well, think it's an elbow. Okay, well, they're right, but there was no whistle. And if they ask, if you ask to review, you could lose a timeout. Now, at this point in the game, I it's think there'd be it. a professional courtesy, though, to go and look at it. Tough to tell from that angle because Shefflin doesn't hit him on the swipe. Angle. Roger Ayers quickly looks at it, says play on. So Georgia Tech ball, one point lead on the road here in double overtime. You're not gonna call faking or flopping right here either. Not at this point in the game. Good professional courtesy by the refs. Both ways. George fading away, hits it. He is tough. The fearless freshman, 18 points, a career high. And they've been able to stay in this zone with the lead. Chase Hunter puts it up, perfect touch. Gotta One. get a stop here, Jay. One point game, a minute left in double overtime. George, step back. Money! Nathan George! You would never know he's a freshman. Ice in his veins on the road. He hit the game-tying three to force overtime, <laughs> and he comes up a clutch again in double OT. Basket is under review. They call the long two on the floor. What a step back. Drive the defender, Hunter, down into the lane and then pull it back.
just 19 years old. He reclassified to be in this freshman class, only had three offers, Seattle U, Corpus Christi, Sam Houston State. Here he is in the ACC making wow. big time plays, and that's as close as it gets. Because there's gold on the front of his toe on that shoe, it looks like he's behind the line. If it was black, it might not look that way. I'm not kidding. Like, I'm yeah. talking about the color of his shoe. I think it's a three. A two was the ruling on the floor. So does Roger Ayers have indisputable evidence here to change it to a three? And the rule is a two. So it stays a one possession game. Clemson basketball trailing by three. And you don't need a three here. Well, the clock did not start on the scoreboard. There it goes. Well, Gerard let it walk up into Hall. Rejected, goes back up with it, jump ball. Possession arrow with Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets ball with a three-point lead. Well, everyone in the building knew the ball was going inside right here. Walled up at the rim is Claude, and then the dig in off the rebound by Debo Coleman. Now, do you foul here to extend the game if you're Brad Brown now? Or do you let this I'm tick down? I'm playing some D right here. You got to really rely on your D to get a stop right here. How good has Nathan George been tonight for Georgia I Tech? Might, I might run two at him. A career high 20. Now trying to finish this road win and snap a five game losing streak. Five seconds to shoot. George, he's kept it himself. Now kicks. Reeves. I don't think he got it off in time. I don't either. Doesn't matter anyway because it didn't hit the rim, so it's a shot clock violation. Gotta check the time now. Empty possession for Georgia Tech. They will go over to the monitor to make sure the clock is right here. The Tigers do have one timeout. That might have been, uh, maybe should have started that a little bit sooner than eight on the clock, right? And I thought George was gonna keep the ball and not give it up. I actually think he might have gotten it off. I think there's there's 12.5 on the clock right now, but that looks like they might add some time. And they do, 13.4. Now, I'm not sure Coach Stoudemire would consider fouling here because they they haven't been a very good offensive rebounding team, right? So if you put Clemson to the line, you, they're a very good free throw shooting team. You don't expect them to miss, but they have missed some in overtime. They haven't been good on the glass. And for Clemson, I mean, if you can take a quick two, I think you take the quick two. Especially because they have been dreadful from three. Just three of 19 tonight and 0 for 5 from three in overtime. Kelly is on Gerard. Well, the pace of this right here, they're going for three. Hall oh, for the tie. Missed it. But a rebound. A foul on the rebound, so it'll stay with Clemson. A costly whistle goes against Coleman. 
which keeps Clemson alive in this game. All he needed to do was not foul there, and Georgia Tech's headed back to Atlanta with the win. That's a deep three for P.J., just a little bit short. Yeah, shoved and him in the, the back. push off inside. So 4.8 on the clock. Each team with one timeout. Georgia Tech had not led the entire second half. Nathan George tied it with 2.3 seconds left to force overtime. They have battled now here in double overtime, trying to close out what would be a Herculean road win. Well, you got to make the first one to consider missing the second. Shefflin rattles it home. Now what do you do, Debbie? Well, you have to practice this. I think Shefflin's gonna, gonna miss it because they re offensive rebounded so well. 22 offensive rebounds on the night for Clemson. Can they get number 23? Shefflin made it. Now you got a foul right away. Timeout, Damon Stoudemire uses his final timeout to talk things over. One point lead. You've got to get this inbounds cleanly. You got to foul right away. Because we've seen Clemson try to execute with 2.5 or 2.6 on an at, a baseline out of bounds on the other end. And they have not been able to get a good look yet, right? So you know what I'm saying here, Jay, is 4.8. You got to foul yeah. immediately so you have enough time that you have another dribble mm -hmm. or two more and dribbles. And you don't have to just heave it don't like have they've to heave done. It. Exactly. Georgia Tech right here. George, money in the late game. Time and score on the step back. Big bucket after big bucket for the rookie. Wall up at the rim by Claude. And then the dig in and tie up by Coleman. Put somebody on the ball. You can't get beat over the top. You got to make Georgia Tech come back to the ball and you got to foul instantly. Yellow Jackets out of timeouts. You can run the baseline. Reeves is the inbounder. You'd think this ball would go to Sturdivant or George. Reeves gets it in cleanly. The foul comes quickly. And Kyle Sturdivant will head to the line for two. Once again, their best free throw shooter. Sturdivant 84% on the season. And that's the fifth foul against Dylan Hunter, so his night is done. Made his first start of the season tonight alongside his brother Chase in the Clemson backcourt. So Brad Brownell can use the time on the substitution for the foul. It's, a, it's the right, I mean, it's a good break for Clemson that this is the player that committed the fifth foul, so you can use a little bit of that time. Georgia Tech can use it as well. So the best Georgia Tech can do here with Kyle Sturdivant at the foul line is make it a three-point game. Well, the last time they needed a three, Joe Girard was a decoy. P.J. Hall took a deep one. And Clemson has struggled from three tonight. Three of 20. Joe Girard's warming up his shooting arm out there. <laughs> Here's Sturdivant. Brad Brownell wants to ice the shooter, calling timeout. His final timeout. And you're right, Debbie, at the end of regulation and the first overtime, Clemson had the ball with two seconds and change. How does the playbook open up when you add two more seconds onto the clock? Because, you know, I was saying you had two dribbles. Now you have potentially four dribbles. If you can catch the ball 
on the move, like not have to come back to the ball and then change direction. If you can catch the ball on a swing or on a cut and you can move up the floor, you put pressure instantly on Georgia Tech's defense. See, Georgia Tech wants to play a little bit softer cover right, you know, like keep them from getting behind them, make them come back to the ball. That could affect one or two dribbles and improve your quality of shot if you're Clemson. That's why the time mattered on fouling quickly. You gotta be clear with your team right here, time and score. If he misses, you need a two or a three to win. Can you even get a two with four seconds? Absolutely. Sturdivant makes it. The best Clemson can do is tie and force triple overtime here. Kelly on Gerard. Actually, Coleman on Gerard also. Clemson just three of 20 from three. They need one here to extend the game. Hall for the tie. Missed it. Georgia Tech stuns Clemson in double overtime. What a road win for Damon Stoudemire to end a five-game losing streak. Gutsy effort, Debbie. What an incredible finish. Georgia Tech made more plays late.